So what did you think of my um, question to the group? I haven't studied it yet, I'm yes. afraid. I have ah. just, oh, ah, that it, I know it's not good enough. You try to tell me there's something more important in your life than <laughs> my question. To that. There is nothing more important in oh, my okay. life at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Other people don't agree with me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's quite interesting because I had uh, an email back from Jonathan and he did science and philosophy, which he did science at A-level and philosophy as a degree. I don't know, as far as I've got so far. But, so it's quite interesting, his, um, his take on, on things. And my first part of it was that I'm asking, I, my, my perspective, which is to this is this is what I think of the world and how we fit in it, and how does the Dharma fit into that, rather than the other way around? How should I start with the Dharma and make my worldview fit that? And he said his perspective was the same. So, and although it, his worldview is is emerging, as of course all of ours are. But it was interesting. So I think, and it, and it sort of ties in with the comments that he makes, in that he's, he's the only one of us who hasn't done the two-year course. Mm. And he is coming from a, a sort of a rational background, rather than a spiritual, let's say. Um, But it's interesting, it's interesting, very, very bright bloke, and uh, lot in, he, because he's done a philosophy degree, he knows lots of philosophers, as you'd expect. He mentioned Heidel, Hegel, Hegel, and mm -hmm. Wit Wittgenstein, which is, which is Wittgenstein. Yeah, I mean, when, yeah. And, uh, it's inter in interesting, you know, like someone like Wittgenstein also tried to break it up into its single parts, I think. You know, and, and because his main work was this tractise where um, he wanted to break up what it is to be human almost into these little little chapters, you know, a bit like, it were a lot more than 32, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, I think it might have been like, a, it's almost a similar approach, you know, you break it up into these little epistles that, 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 and, and, and then at the end of it, you have explained human life. Uh, and, um, he it was published no one could understand it um it is you know if you think heidegger is bad try wittgenstein but he, he you know it's just uh, uh he really wanted to nail it down like that and then he got into huge problems with language because language actually doesn't allow that because language is holistic it, it, with all its implications, you know, language is like we talk poetry all the time, I think, you know, so we have all these assume, assumed things in language all the time. So he tried to do something impossible with language, which is like to define something with a tool that is averse to definition almost, because it's always poetic. And um, and he, he, uh, he was a teacher in a little country school at the time, and with it, he made it a project with his, um, you know, country bumpkin <laughs> pupils to um, make a, a, a vocabulary, a, a dictionary of the most important words that we need, and then be very accurate about them so that we know exactly what we are talking about when he's talking about these 
mathematical things because his best friend was Russell, Bertram Russell, the mathematician, and they had a real thing going on. And um, the, the, uh, so he tried to, to do this definition business and um, completely ran uh, into impossibilities. And in the end, he said, well, what, what, anything that you can describe is not worth description, like, you know. So it is very difficult. And he gave that up. And in the end, um, he, he, he stepped back from it. So this is just impossible. We cannot do it with language. Wow. Well, it's interesting because Heidegger did a very similar thing. Well, as far as I can see, you know, both invented lots of new words, which had the definitions that he wanted to have. He wanted them to have. Yeah, and and all in you know, a lot of um, um, Heidegger did that a lot. Um, Hannah Arendt did it a lot because they all had the same problem, basically. If you try to make something revolutionary new, understood using old words, you have already lost it because the old words are interpreted in their sweet way and have such a plurality behind them anyway. Everyone understands something else. You know, what is ethics? We could, we could sit there for ages, couldn't we? Yet everyone uses the word very easily and, and there's all these connotations that, that are not a given where do you start so it's it, um the passing out as you as i'm, I'm with you it is maybe an uh, a feedback cycle improvement tool um it is something that gives you a guideline for discussion but a bit, I mean, I'm still, I hope I understood that right from Gary, who, who actually says that a definition in, in um, coding is, is not as precise as we think it might be, you know, that it is more like a Venn diagram. It's like, do, do I get that right? I can't, I can't remember what you said about that. Where is he? Where's Gary? Maybe it's good prison. Oh, God. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure he's on top of things. But yeah, I don't know. But it's th certainly, well, we found that, isn't it, in our conversations over the year that definitions are problematic. I think it's it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it has to always be approached, I think, with stories and and poetry in that way, rather than definitions. I think that's yeah, it. That seems that's, to me. Yeah. yeah. I think and metaphors make, work well. And I was reading yeah. um, because somebody mentioned the beginner's mind um, in a conversation somewhere. I think it was on an email in the forum. And so I looked back. And they're really good. I mean, I've just, I think I've got the book and read it a while ago, but I hadn't realised quite how pithy the uh, comments were. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Lynn. Hi. Oh, hi, happy Easter. She said happy Easter. <laughs> it's only my ear, so. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, yeah, all good. Thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> so I want to talk to you. She's off. Um, yes. Have you come? Oh, look, I'm going to share a screen. Oh, he's not. Host has disabled the screen sharing facility. But uh, he's called Shunri Suzuki. Yeah, Shunri Suzuki, yeah. Are you familiar with him? Uh, I have heard the name before. Right, well, if you look up his book, which is... 
he was one of the first ones that came to the west with, right, with yeah. buddhism wasn't he yeah and i think he wrote zen zen mind beginner's mind yeah and it's just on i just looked it up is the quotes just at one i think pretty sure i've read it um and there's some really neat little aphorisms sort of one-liners um uh, treat every moment as your last it's not preparation for something else actually that's not from that book oh he says yeah um if your mind is empty it's always ready for anything if it's open to everything it, sorry if your mind is empty it is always ready for anything it is open to everything in the beginner's mind there are many possibilities but in the expert's mind there are few that could be that could be pure heidegger I, I last weekend was uh, the Bodhi College did the self non self oh, yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. How did that go? Uh, um, a, a little less exciting than I hoped for, because um, when I attended the London thing yeah. about the Stoics and Epicureans yeah. and all that. Uh, John Peacock was, you know, drawing just from a much wider source. I guess that's in the title. Uh, but he 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 quoted and you know, talked a lot about Heidegger at the time. So I had hoped that he would do something similar again. And they both stuck really to the Buddhist uh, view and didn't bring many other views in at all from the from the Greeks or, or modern philosophy, I heard nothing. And I know that John Peacock knows about, you know, he's a ph studied philosophy, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. his thing. And and um, there was very little of that. So it was going around the same thing of the Buddhist self, non-self thing. And pretty much it's a bit what, what uh, Stephen already um, covered, really. And um, it's it's all right the discussion about it, but you could see how people, uh, when you have only that view, I I, I I looked back at it and thought those were exactly the conundrums that led me to read Heidegger that that mm. I didn't I couldn't get it. He said, "What are you talking about? You tell me not to have a self and then to improve it, you know? So what's going on here?" And mm. I, I in the in the discussion format thing, I, I saw that people were just in the same conundrum, not even knowing that they were. So they swung by in the, in the group, breakout groups. It was the same thing, you know, if we had just talked or been presented with not having a self, then everyone was very much into not having a self. And then when we were into, had just had a uh, talk about ethics, then they were all equally into improving that self. And they made that swing without even noticing. So it's it's not reliable, you know. It's it's just like uh, you you have these two incompatible things going on here, and and it's not even apparent to you. So I thought it was like, ah, oh, it just reminded me of how little understood that can be. And when you talk about it from the Heideggerian, you, know, you can talk about it and it makes sense. So I sat there and said, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you haven't got that move from, away from Descartes and little me in here, uh, in my skull, then you're lost and you don't even know that you're lost. Uh, for me. Yeah, no, I, uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm sort of surprising, isn't it? Because you think, how could you, how can you discuss the self, non-self, without reference to evolutionary psychology? I'm, I'm sort of, this is my point really about my question to the group, is how, Gautama did no access to science and he didn't know anything about evolution. So he didn't know how people came about. So 
they didn't know anything about the mechanisms of the mind. And we know a little bit now about it. And, it, and evolutionary psychology is very interesting. And it, it, it's still in its nascent stages, but it, it's, it opens up the sort of, when you think about it, pretty obvious that the brain, the mind, the consciousness, all of these things have evolved. And there are mechanisms for that. But everything must come from the material. The, me the mechanisms behind everything are part of the world. So whatever we call the self has got to be part of the world. It's, it's got to be existing in the same thing as everything else. So it can't be separate from everything else. We can't see ourselves, or we can, obviously we do see ourselves as separate from everything else. We see ourselves as, this is myself. So obviously we think of it as different, but it can't be. So there's a, there's a conundrum, a logical conundrum, and it it's, can be explained in a, in a Buddhist way, because that's what we've got to have access to, that's his way of explaining it, but equally it can be explained from a evolutionary psychology perspective, which he didn't have access to. So I can't understand how that isn't something that is obviously being used as a tool in order to, when you're discussing self, non-self. Makes no sense to me. It just like, why not discuss God? even though the evidence would suggest there isn't God. Why not just keep discussing God? You know, you could say, well, the reason we don't is because there doesn't seem to be any evidence in it or for, for this as a phenomenon. So why, why bother with it? Well, that evidence has come from scientific inquiry, or the lack of it, and, and, and you know, the idea of falsification in, in scientific inquiry and you can't falsify God therefore it's not it doesn't work within the same realm as everything that would be in, in scientific so we can't talk about them at the same time so we don't we don't discuss God and science at the same time but we why don't we discuss self and science at the same time using what evidence we have and equally you know as you say with other philosophers with other perspectives on self why only use one source i can't work it out um i'd um i can't work it out either i think it they they kind of I can only imagine that the, because it is so worldwide now, so, you know, from, and, and lots of these guys are American that are the, the participants. I didn't meet anyone not American. There were a few people from Holland I saw, but all my breakout groups were, were with Americans completely. So this is a big, this is the, where, where people come from now and they definitely are all in one or the other tradition of Buddhism so at the moment there must be Bodhi College must be aware that there is a lot of potential followers that come they are quite into the Buddhism thing and you cannot Heidegger is controversial anyway definitely in America if you mention him in America they just say the Nazi and then, then you you have discredited. I mean, you, you you mustn't mention this is really strong there. I think so. You can't use him, and um, I don't know why. Then probably both of them don't feel like they are experts in evolutionary psychology, so they don't use that either. But it is indeed, you know, we talking about a philosophy of Gautama, which was. It is really firmly planted before the time of 
um, of the scientific um, enlightenment. So before uh, Descartes, when this little self in my skull was invented, so I'm trying to understand what Gautama says from my perspective, normal perspective of Cartesian worldview, who couldn't get round this, you know, Descartes couldn't get round the same self problem and therefore had to be very strongly believing in a God because you cannot, you cannot do it without a God, basically. Uh, so it was all very scientific. At the same time, it absolutely relied on a God. And then, so, but, so everyone's Western worldview is full of that stuff, but not known. It's like being fish in water. And then you try to understand Gotama and his uh, uh, stuff, which is predating that substantially. And he didn't have the same problem, I think, with the self. So he could say all these things and people had half a chance of understanding what he was talking about. Whereas now, uh, an, a non-scientific and a non-Heideggerian um, uh, person hasn't got a chance in hell, I think, to understand what, these, what, what they were just presenting there without getting into such knots about self and not self. I don't think it is... You, I couldn't make that step. I didn't see anyone in that group making that step. No, it just, it doesn't make it, I don't know, it just, it seems odd to me. Mm. And that, well, it just doesn't seem right that you should ignore the wealth of evidence. I mean, the other thing about the Americans is that Robert Wright, who's written the book, what is it called, Buddhism, um, Buddhism is True, this is why Buddhism should, I don't know, come from something like but it, it, that. I mean, he's a oh, scientist. Yeah. I mean, Recently, he's a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He's an evolutionary mm. scientist. Uh, he, mm. He's a psychologist and he's done the science and he's come to this conclusion. So you think, well, there you've got somebody who's American, who's popular, he's a good communicator, and he's looked at the science. And why? not include that and then you don't so you don't have to go down the the heidegger route because the 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 guy's explanations are fairly straightforward i mean he's, he's he runs courses on it you know it's 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 clear it's in the public domain it's easily accessible um so you know why why isn't it i mean i when i'm I remember talking to Stephen about it. He said, well, that he was asked to write the foreword for Robert Wright's book, and he, he wouldn't because he didn't like the title. But he has been interviewed by Robert Wright. But I think with many, like every interview with Stephen that I've listened to, Stephen said pretty much the same things. It's almost as if he's he's still in a position where he's having to explain his position, explain what he means by secular Buddhism. Yeah. So it's, it's almost as if he's having to do that every time. And he uses every platform that I've come across in order to say pretty much the same things. So yeah. we, we seem to be where we were. I mean, and, and it, it's not, we don't seem, I mean, so our year of discussing things I think we, we've seemed to have moved on a bit and uh, at least started to think about how it could, things could be moved on. But if you, you, you've got to use other material, you have to use other source material. You can't just keep going back to, to Gotham. And I, it just it seems so strange because that seems to be what they were doing, what both. Um, Stephen and, as you say, um, John. John was doing when we, yeah. when I saw him in, in, in a day in London. Um, he thought, well, yeah, this is really interesting. Well, what, what's happened to it all? In fact, the, the week 
week-long retreaty course we were supposed to be on a year ago when lockdown happened was all about that, wasn't it? With the Stoics and the Epicureans and Socrates and the Greeks and how those, what were those relations, using that as another, I think it's still no science, but um, at least there's a, there was a, an attempt to broaden And maybe yeah. he, does, he does say that he's going to do that in the second semester, doesn't he? So bring him up. We have to just really see. I mean, that yeah. will make or break it for me now. This yeah. is interesting, actually, because if he's just going to go on like that, I will probably then, you know, leave it at that with him. Mm. I thought, you know, I could just wander on with him because he seemed to be on the move. But if, the, if this is again so, uh, you know, if it, because so far and with this last weekend, the, his main thing seems to be just that move from the truth to the tasks. And it is just, uh, so it's not, it's, it's, it's practical, not metaphysical, it's ethical, not metaphysical. And, and that's his big move, and that's great. Um, I, I take that. Um, but it, it, that is it. You know, that, that is it. It's just, doesn't, it, it's not moving on. It's not going into other, so far. And this weekend, definitely, even with the two of them, didn't go anywhere. So Maybe. It's, Sorry. Hmm. No, cool. Maybe what he's doing is consolidating. Maybe he's saying, well, look, if I go too far now, I'm not going to bring anybody with me, except for the advanced students like Elfie and, and Gary and Rupert. They're, you know, I'm, nobody else is going to be with me. So what I need to do is to keep restating where we are now, move in very small steps. But that way I can have a much broader appeal. And then what we need is outriders. We need, we need us <laughs> to, to be doing the more um, advanced and, and esoteric um, uh, thinking. Maybe he's probably doing the thinking as well, but he's not, he's not communicating that bit because that would just lose everybody which is sort of a bit what we're finding in our group that our little breakout our little not breakout but our little study group is that you've got people there who are quite interested in uh, like Sean and Gary they're quite interested in um, but Gary in our group not, not Gary Dean yeah mm. um, who are happy to study and go along with Stephen and to talk with Stephen from the perspective of after Buddhism, the book, and where, where they are with their study and Buddhism and where he is in his study of Buddhism. So they're, and they will go along with Stephen, they'll, they'll move and they will debate with Stephen. But if he, if Stephen was talking like the sort of things he was saying to us, like he just wants to get rid of Buddhism, at the end of that, of course, he was saying, I really want to drop the word Buddhism. And I think there's real problems with that. And um, which is the things that we were excited about. In the same yeah. he you said could say that. Yes. Yes. If he, if he says that now, how many of those people would stay with him in, in out of his 200 people on this course now? So That's maybe, it. maybe he's thinking, well, I can't do that yet. Mm. I've still got to move in small steps because I can mm. be more radical with a, a group of people like we were mm. who didn't have any commitments to Buddhism, pretty much. And he could be quite, it wasn't offhand, but he was a quite sort of curt with Paul when Paul was talking about you know, the, the, where are the sacred bits. And, you know, he... I don't think he would say that to the group 
to his group at the moment. I don't think he'd say, well, he could do it with us because we weren't committed. We didn't have those commitments. And so he could see that we were happy to engage with all sorts of stuff and have no reverence for Buddhism and didn't need Buddhism. We didn't need it. We just needed the ideas. We were just interested in the ideas. But yeah. how many of those people he's got at the moment, those 200, and the readership that he's got would be prepared to drop Buddhism, the name completely, and carry on with him. So maybe he's in this stuff, he's in a dilemma because, like you're and not me and you are saying, well, look, if he doesn't move on, he's lost us. Mm. Maybe he said, well, it's actually more. It's I, I can lose you. <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> There's not too matter. many of you, but I can't. If I lose the Buddhists, then if I just go off on one, then maybe that's just too radical at the moment because mm. I need to bring those along slowly. Yeah. So particularly all these Americans, I mean that same thing as you said, there's a lot of them there. So it, it might be that that's just actually what they're what they're thinking. We can't move too quickly with this. I can do my thinking, I can, but I need to be careful about how I proceed and how I project this. So. I think that's probably, it seems to be the only sort of rational way that it makes sort of sense as to what's happening. And that he's sort of getting a group where he can engage with these ideas. And maybe, I think what you said last time about having focused groups, theme focused groups rather than just general discussion would be a way of moving this on because then you could have people who were interested in ideas and, and not interested in Buddhism. And those people who were interested in Buddhism wouldn't join, they just wouldn't come because they, they want the word Buddhism. So I think that's what we need to do um, is to somehow allow that, allow the mechanism that he's got to enable that mechanism to happen, that we can have little subgroups to, to discuss ideas. I think that, that that we have to be, be able to find each other, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there is more of us than just three, but um, we are dispersed. Yeah. Indeed. And um, in all these little groups, there said people who say, do we really always just need to talk about 2,500 years before Christ, you know, yeah. and, and I, has, haven't we got a few more resources or we are in a different context. So we need to look at it differently because we cannot just assume that we have the same mind frame. Uh, of Gautama, we don't, we definitely not. Indeed, like you say in your thing, you know, we are in our world, not in his. Yeah, yeah. And and it it is sufficiently different to be a real problem, and we cannot just keep going back to that all the time. Yeah. It can it can only be part of of what informs us. Yeah. We need we need more other things, yeah. But yeah. yeah, I totally agree with your analysis. I think he, that is it. I think what he stuck his, you know, he he went as far out of his comfort zone in this second secular Dharma group as he ever has done, because we encouraged him. We in, in every session we demonstrated to him that we really didn't need the Buddhist language. In, you know, I think it was palpable when he brought the scholars along, like, uh, what was her name? That that kind of, we just would glaze over a little when, you know, we were about this, uh, I don't know how many revelations and stuff. Um, and, um, but then look who he brought along. 
the long-term meditators or the absolute, uh, you know, single-minded uh, autistic scholars. Those were his collaborators on the course. Yeah. And, uh, at, uh, and so they, they, they brought that in. These are also the guys that we find in our groups, don't you think? I mean, yeah. I, I saw that there was one person in, in one breakout group and he had a bit of that uh, Heideggerian, you know, uh, being in a clearing as, an, as a self. I, and he talked about spaciousness. And I said, well, so how, how, what informed you? I know where I got that view from, uh, you know, myself is that spaciousness because I could, you know, I think that's very close to Heideggerian clearly, clearing. Um, so where did you get that? And he said, very shy, he said, well, I don't like to make much of it, but it is of 30 years of meditation practice. <laughs> 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 and, and, and you can see that in the rest of the group, there was both like, Ooh. <laughs> uh, and also, I mean, what well, it leaves you with despair, doesn't it? Okay, is it that, that? that is is it is it you know thirty years? I I think I run out of time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the only way you're going to get. There. Yeah, yeah. That is really. I mean, how can you? You know, you can see that all that comes over people when 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 you're confronted with something like that, and also, yeah. Well, what chance have I got? You know. Okay. See you then. Um, and it's just it it leaves me just okay cool <laughs> but yeah i think that, that clearly if you think of um um sean and and um and people i think the first dharma course was very very orthodox and um so there that and that was the 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 format that we were presented with which was very old-fashioned really wasn't it i mean oh, much absolutely. more yeah. yeah in the presentation material yeah was was very very you know just just the book and um and definitely what what the collaborators the other teachers presented was absolute orthodoxy mm. nothing do you know you sometimes had to really even find steven slant in their presentation it wasn't necessarily there. It was very orthodox. And we, you know, weren't so impressed by that. And in the discussions, to go, you know, dragged him somewhere else all the time. Well, I remember that day when we were in Holland and it, it, there was a presentation by, what's she called, Jenny? Yeah, Jenny Wilkes, yeah. And she did this bizarre thing on, the, like you say, your 97... <laughs> something or others and and we were all just falling asleep and we had no idea what was going on and he could, <laughs> he was in the room and he thought actually what is going on and then he went away that night and came back and rewrote it and he gave it the next day he came out and he said well actually i think it should be more like this and we were all great you know because that is a sort of understandable so he sat there he recognized this this is wrong it's it's irrelevant it doesn't suit, so I'll write it, I'll make it into something which is yeah. fits the way we are now. And I, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking, great, that's really good because he has, he's obviously not, he's, he's doing what he says, what he talks about, which is to say, it needs to be for the modern world, it needs to be for the world we live in now. And, and, and so he, he just recreated something, which was sort of, which was, was interesting. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was, a, it, it was a model that you could understand. Unlike the model that was presented the day before, which was completely incomprehensible. And to make the other one comprehensible was pointless because he was starting from the wrong place. So he was presenting something which, which we could work with and was a reasonable starting place. Yeah. So, and it, it was like, I mean, 
that, that Tom was in that group. Do you remember? That was yeah, the same yeah. course where Tom, I think it was his last one too, where Tom said, I'm into behaviorism, you know, <laughs> like, like just throwing that cup to most yeah. pigeons, you know, he said, don't give me the 95 thingies, you know, it, I'm into behaviorism. That's, that's the way forward. And I, I just thought that was, and I don't agree with it, at the same time, I thought that was just necessary. I know, a bit of shaking up here because this is just too tedious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, it did wake Stephen up a little, I think. He did, as you say, I remember it well. Yeah, he came back and had worked on it clearly for some hours to make this yeah. something that actually anyone could halfway get, but let alone yeah. work with. Um, and and Jenny wasn't happy. You well, know, I, I she was. Know, she, 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 I, I I don't think she appreciated that kind of messing with the orthodoxy. You know, and then no one will usually if you spend so much time on learning this stuff. You know, and then someone else with no knowledge says, oh, so that doesn't mean anything to me. You won't be impressed. You know, it's, how yeah, dare you yeah, mess yeah. with my with my expertise? Exactly. <laughs> well, I think that in general terms might well be what we've been talking about, because messing with the expertise of all of those people who have committed a lot of time and effort into Buddhism, yeah. might be more than they will take if he messes with their expertise if he messes with them too much at this stage and says well actually i'm going to get rid of the word buddhism because um it's not appropriate anymore then they might think hang on i've spent quite a lot of time invest invested in buddhism and uh, you can't do that so maybe it's just too radical you just you can't yet why is this course called is it is it is it called after Buddhism? Yeah, Buddhism and beyond, isn't it? Buddhism and beyond. And Buddhism and beyond. Yeah. Mm. Which is not quite the same as. Yes, it's a sort of and. Yeah. So. I, I think it, it there, there will there is a, a split coming, isn't there? It's like in any party. <laughs> There's a split coming. Well, maybe there, hopefully it's not a split and more a uh, di, diverse, di, diverse directions at yeah. different speeds, different. Um, uh, yeah, you, you can move off in different tangents. You can stay where you are, if you like, and mull over the 32 dimensions of awakening, or you can use it as a starting point and move on to something else, which doesn't involve Buddhism as a term. But we'll see. Uh, mm. and re realistically, that's actually what's what he probably wants that happen. Because you, that's where the interesting stuff's going to happen, isn't it? It's going to, the radical thinking is going to happen <laughs> by people like our Gary saying, well, actually, you know, we could use the internet to do this and that, and we could reconfigure things and people could get connected here and there. Stuff that, you know, Steve is never going to come up with because. Can't know about everything. You know, you know anything about the, the potential of the technologies? But I've in the breakout groups, I've come across quite a few people who are like us, who are not committed Buddhists, but are interested in uh, what the practicalities of it, what it can do to health. You know, and it's the evidence-based stuff. Well, I've tried this and it works, so that's good. I'll do that. I'll take the bits that work, but I'm not really interested in the dogma. So it's like you were saying, we just need a way of bringing those people together. Mm. So I think that's... I, I, I think it would be, it, it would be good. And that would be a group that then really um, 
had enough in common to develop yes. this, you know, to, to and to also get um, uh, reassure Stephen, maybe to to you know, it, it, it's because it for him. <sighs> Can you do with us nineteen? You know, yeah. that it, it's um, um, that is a really very small group of people who. Yeah. Is, but there might be more interest. I mean, our study group, I think, is such a such an example of it. There, yeah. there are the, the the people who are not interested in in any after Buddhism stuff. They they invested a lot of study time into the Buddhist stuff and just they are after polishing it really and and being yeah, better fine. Buddhists. Yeah. And enlightened better Buddhists. And that kind of heuristic approach is good enough for them, which is interpreting the literature uh, that that has uh, been passed down in a modern way. That's, yeah. isn't yeah. it? That That is yeah. good enough for them. And that is what Stephen has done most of his life. Uh, and uh, yeah. but what, what we would be interested in is, is much, you know, is, is, is quite different from that. It yeah. is, there is a, there is a, a, a good, um, a good mind to throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> <laughs> what I find interesting that the the undecided ones, the uh, in a vivant, um, Rose. Uh, um, Is it Rose? Uh, no, yes. with 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 and. Mm, uh, I think it is Ruth. Is it Ruth? Oh my God! <laughs> um, well, I might be wrong, but it's just came to my head. I'm off. I am wrong. I have a thought, so. Judy. 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 Yeah. Judy and Ruth. Yeah. No, uh, no. Judy and Viv. And Viv. Yeah. Judy. Uh, I insist. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's that my head is so crazy. I get this thing. Oh, no, it's definitely not. No, it's not. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't stop calling her Ruth. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> Judy. They, they quite, they quite interested in yeah. in the quite yeah. uh, in our flippant talk, aren't they? Yeah. They are. They're, they're, they're quite not, drawn to that. They are. They're not, I they're not committed. And I can see that if you were, I don't know what the makeup of that first cohort was, but you can see that. If the majority were the scholars, the Buddhist scholars, and you were in the group, it would be quite intimidating. It would be difficult to break out from, you know, and present another perspective because you think, well, actually, you know, that's what I signed up for. And obviously, there's, most of them are on this, and yeah, that, you know, that's, that's the way things are going. So I'm not going to, you know, stick my oar in, I'm just going to go along with it because that's. It was, I volunteered uh, to join. I didn't, you know, I wasn't coerced. It's, it's a course I'm on. Um, and I have really got no right to, to mess with it because there's all these other people and they are quite happy with where it's going. Yeah. I, I well, God, I would have been miserable, I think. In that <laughs> but we were probably like that to begin with. I mean, there must have been a stage where we got more confident about sticking our oil in. About, I mean, I'm I'm a sort of contrary chap anyway, and I speak before I think of the consequences about upsetting people. So I, but I didn't say anything. I think the first one was probably all right. It was probably Tom was the first time. That was quite an outburst by Tom. And that was quite dramatic, I think. There were others before then, though. I mean, I remember that Marie, for example, Maria. Oh, yes. she was great. Maria, 
she threw the gauntlet yeah. in at every yeah. which uh, opportunity uh, yeah. with yoga and um, and, and feminism yeah, and yeah. and, yeah. and she really railed actually railed him quite yeah. a lot didn't she yeah. <laughs> sometimes he really didn't like her much yeah. <laughs> and it was totally refreshing and necessary i always but a, there were yeah. a lot of yeah. um, people in the group who kind of rolled their eyes if Maria would speak. And I always thought, yes, go for it, Maria. You know, it needs a bit of shaking up here. <laughs> and, but yeah, she was radical for a lot of people in she the was, group. Yeah. But uh, wow, what a, yeah, it needed it, didn't it? Needed yeah, the shaking. And she was ready to do that because um, she didn't give a fuck, which is yes. fantastic. Yeah, but and and then uh, the you know, the the quieter ones too, like Wolf, who comes in there with his quiet Freudian <laughs> Jungian thing, you know. And yeah. says, I, I I know rather a lot too, you know. I don't yeah. know about this. <laughs> right, just just people who who integrated their Buddhist practice into their other worldview rather than being Buddhists who put every, everything in the world into their Buddhist worldview. Don't absolutely. you think? Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. the difference. People who had integrated Buddhist practices into their worldview, which was a philosophical one or coming from a different tradition altogether. And that's the way that eases this out a little here and there weren't you know, it was just Paul poor soul who found himself in this wayward group who who was the Buddhist and wanted it all integrated into a Buddhist world well, thank you very much <laughs> yeah. but, but it, he was necessary too so that we would be reminded of how difficult this would be for someone committed like that Ah, oh. hey, well, we shall, I, I'm prepared to be underwhelmed by the second semester, but let's see. <laughs> yeah, well, I think so long as we think about how we can create a, a mechanism for allowing like-minded people to get together, then well, that's good. That was Gary, what's it been? Oh, I'm what a relief. To go, but oh, it's, it's oh. Crazy. Maybe you got the time wrong. Oh. We might have got an hour because we're, we're. Yeah, it is an hour later, isn't it? Maybe got the time wrong. Oh, I'm just glad that it turns up because I'm always very suspicious what is happening there. So, as long as he shows his face. <laughs> but yes, I mean, um, I think you got, look at your things, you know, that what you've written, I've just been glancing at it. And it's, you're the one who has the, the background in education like that and, and your strong interest in creativity. You come from a different worldview that, I, I mean, you are in such a position to, because you can write and it's just glorious how you write it with such clarity. And, oh, and we, I mean, that, that is something to rally around, to create the interest. And then I think really it would be amazing to, to create a forum where people can, who well, are what, interested in that. One, hmm. of my, one of my intentions in this question thing that I've put, Mm. is to lead into the, what we've just been talking about, about the idea of how we can manufacture um, the breakout or the, the, the interest groups in the second semester. So I want to see what Sean and Gary, as well as Viv and Judy and Jonathan, say 
about it. So I want to try, I, what I'm interested in is not really necessarily the answer to the question, but, 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 but look, here's somebody who thinks differently. Here's somebody who doesn't start from a Buddhist point of view and actually wants to move away from it and but would like to explore those Buddhist, those Gautama ideas in conjunction with another worldview. How, firstly, is that something that you think is a good idea? And if you think it is, then how do you think we should do it? How can we bring it on? Is there? But can you hear me? Well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh, hello. What a welcome sight. Uh, the, the audio isn't too good, but I should manage. Uh, we thought you'd been arrested. <laughs> well, you've been here an hour. Oh, well, this is uh, now five o'clock um, normal time. So. <laughs> Ah, is it because our ah, changed in your day? Exactly. We are in summertime. Mm. That's it. We are oh, an hour ahead. Well, it seems Zoom didn't take account of that in their mm. time zones. So, so what have we been talking about? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about you for an hour. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Well, unfortunately, it's been recorded, Gary, so you can well, that's true. while away your, your days <laughs> listening to her, us chatting. It, it didn't happen just to uh, have a look at uh, the latest uh, two videos that I put public. Um, well, one was one of them just us last week? Yes. Yeah, yeah. well, I was there. Yeah, well, well but were you there again? <laughs> I, have, I haven't. You did one with. Um, Ellen. Ellen. Oh, Ellen. Ellen. Yes. yes. And I no, I haven't seen it. I, uh -huh. The weather's been too nice, and I've been in the garden. Although it's freezing uh -huh. today, so I could have mm -hmm. do it today. No, we haven't yet, but we will, because you recommended it. I will. Yeah, I just, yeah. Is, is this a new one that you did, or is it the I'm, same one you talked about? You said you did the same one. Yeah, it's the same one. All right. Uh, but I, I thought it sort of, for some reason, thought it timely to make it public, you know, she had it, and that she, she's, she's quite okay with that anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I was just actually thinking about the uh, our last discussion and perhaps even some of our unpublished ones. Uh, that this last, that the, the last discussion I did publish or, or make public for what that's worth, and it's probably going to get about another uh, five likes or something or five views. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, when I was you know, revisiting it and looking at it again, I was just sort of thinking, you know, what would the, uh, people on the current course make of all this um, and how much um, in a congruence of opinion um, would they have or not have uh, with, with those sorts of views. Um, and I'm just sort of wondering whether it's, you know, uh, I guess politic to make the discussion known um, or not. Um, what do you think? Well, it's interesting because that's pretty much what we've been talking about for the last yeah. hour. Um, and I, in our study group, um, I volunteered to, we're, we're, we're meeting every fortnight now, so we're going to meet next Tuesday, we're going to meet this Tuesday. But we mentioned it would be useful to have themes to talk about rather than a, a question to talk about in the meeting rather than just open discussion. So I volunteered and I've done the first one and I've asked the question, which is, this is my worldview and I'm interested in seeing how the Dharma fits within it, as opposed mm -hmm. to using the Dharma and then making my worldview fit within it. And, and mm -hmm. the question is then, is this, is this acceptable? Is it, what do you think about this? Is this a good idea or not? 
And what my interest is, is to see if we can get to a stage where there's an agreement that yes, there are lots of different levels of interest within secular Dharma. And wouldn't it be a good idea, as Elfie says, that we connect those people who have interest of different, in different areas, at different levels, and that would move things forward faster. So that those people who are interested in it at the level we're talking about, at the dogma level, the people who are strongly interested in Buddhism, that they will, they can meet, and those people who are interested in the more radical ideas, dropping the word Buddhism completely and only taking some of those ideas, they could meet. And so what I'd be interested to find out in, the, in our group, in our study group, is to see whether there is any uh, agreement about that as an approach. Which, and, and it will involve, I think, a bit of reflection on the fact that there are different perspectives. Because we know there are different perspectives, but I'm not sure whether people who are committed to Buddhism see those different perspectives. Mm. So well, we'll, yeah, I mean, some do, I think. Um, but, yeah, but yeah, it's, it is a question sometimes. Uh, I'm just wondering, why, I, I guess what I, I'm sort of, what, what's going to happen, and this, 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 this is sort of a, a classic um, uh, fork. Remember I was talking about yeah, forks yeah, and, about uh, forks, yeah. and, and yeah. open source where you sort of take what you, what's already there and sort of piss off with it and do something else. Um, you know, it, it's it's a bit like that. Once you sort of say that that there there is a division within a particular group, even whether whether it exists or not, you have already created it. Uh, and and so and so you you, you potentially sow the seeds of, of of tribalism in 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 just the very act of of defining a particular uh, boundary. Um, and 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 then sort of, I guess, forcing people to sort of say, well, am I or am I not? Um, you know, which is, um, you know, I'm I'm not sure if it if it can be done that explicitly and that um, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Well, maybe. Maybe it's not forking. <laughs> Maybe it's diversity. Maybe there are lots of. It's a bit more like the model that you talked about before, where you have a central core, and then you have people. When you were talking about how we could get people connected over the over the world through using the internet in a different way, but people would just pick up ideas and develop them because there was an interest group around them, but always have a relation. Well, not necessarily, I suppose it might just go off completely, but there would be a relation within the, um, or back to the source, which is worth still calling the Dharma. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish we'd get a better word. So, I mean, it's Dharma related, and I suppose the, I, the usefulness of the Dharma is that it's difficult to define. And therefore, nobody can say, well, it's not Dharma. Because you don't know what my Dharma is. So. Well, well, I think that that's one of the, the, the reasons that, that Stephen actually, you know, is devising this you know, three, 32 dimensions of, of awakening. Because uh, it corresponds with his his eggs uh, metaphor, in that you know, you, you, you know, Dharma can be many things, but the, the things which might be important are, are those ones you emphasise and those ones you keep turning, uh, rather than rather than necessarily all of those dimensions. I think that's sort of the 
the structural approach he's, he's possibly taking. So that sort of avoids sort of a hard definition, uh, but it becomes more of a um, uh, something more lumpy and, and, uh, and something in which you can sort of be, be more selective and, and, and not necessarily having to define all of those things as part of your particular dharma. I think that's the structure that, that he's thinking about. I could be wrong, but I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if, if he did take an approach like that, because uh, that sort of avoids the problems of you know, hard definitions of dharma. You've basically got, you then sort of split it up into multiple subsets of what is considered to be dharma. And then it's just up to you to sort of determine which, one, which of those are, are important and which ones are, are less important. And so that I would allow that, then different interest groups to coalesce yes. around different of his dimensions. Yeah, so, so the commonality is, is some sort of uh, relationship with, with, with those aspects which have been defined uh, as, as dharmic in some way or, or, or as part of the dharmic practice in some way, uh, but not necessarily encompassing uh, um, all of them. Or all of them simultaneously, or, or, or you know, like I said, it depends what you think is, is important in, in, in terms of you know, your own particular frameworks, I guess. I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting, by the way, that that's necessarily the, the, the right way to go. Um, in fact, you know, I, I, I've got my doubts also, but it is a way of sort of getting around that hard definition problem uh, and, and then just sp splitting it up in, into to, you know, 32 subheadings, uh, which, which, which are you know, those behaviors or characteristics which uh, define uh, a, a, a dharmic mindset. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, Alfie. Yeah. No, no. I, 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 having a bit trouble understanding you, Gary, with the sound. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure that that I could get my head around it really. So um, don't know. Maybe it will get clearer when Rupert's response. Well, what I think Gary was saying is that, that Stephen is considering what we've been talking about, that there are different avenues that you could look into, you could emphasize more than others, um, and those are within his 32 dimensions. So for instance, one of them, or four of them are to do with creativity. Um, I'm just finding it out in the workbook. Uh, Once you quoted also in your email. Yeah. 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 Mm. So, for instance, the of the 32 dimensions of awakening, number one um, is number one being the first of the four uh, tasks. So the path is formation, task is embracing life, the vow, element, color. And then there's the virtues, and then there's the four strategic efforts, and then there's the four bases of creativity. Aspiration, energy, heart and soul, experimentation. So, Uh, no, I can't quite see how that's, that's a thing. Where do these 32 come from? 32. You should have four times eight somewhere because that's the, the paradigm he's using in his head to structure all this, I think. Right, four times eight. Uh, well, there's only there's four there and there's four there. No, there's not. That's a different number there. Oh, there's loads there. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Uh, but that one hasn't gone up. I've never done this. I've never actually tried to find out what it's 32 are. Uh, mm. But that's got eight in it. And that's only got five. That's got seven. Because the, the, the last one, the four, that's got the end cold part. So that's got four of these, these things. But the one before that was number three, um, beholding the stopping of reactivity. That's got seven. And number two, letting go of reactivity, that's only got five, the five powers. And embracing life has only got four bases of creativity. It's also got four foundations of mindfulness. That's just, I'm going to have to spend a bit of time. We could have done with putting numbers next to them, so we knew what the <laughs> 32 were. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering yeah. how useful they are like that anyway. Um, I mean, if, if you're trying to describe, you know, the elements of Dharma, um, then, you know, should you be describing qualities? Or should you be describing skills or, or both at the same time, for example? So, you know, what are these elements? What do they constitute? Are, are, they, are they qualities or, or are they, um, um, yeah, or are they skills? Or, or, or are they, you know, skills which sort of lead to qualities or vice versa? Because that list just doesn't, it just doesn't seem well, not what I need to look at it again, but it doesn't doesn't seem to have the coherency that uh, that I would like to see. Well, can I share? Uh, <clears throat> if you let me share the screen, I can share it with you. Well, can't you do that? Oh, no, it says second. host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> He's just like I'm, that. You're very dominant. <laughs> yeah. Very bossy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say I, I wouldn't have any of that. <laughs> how, how do I? I think I've got to actually join the meeting. Okay, I'll just. <laughs> we nice join the meeting, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, how you keep your underlings in see. check. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Just <laughs> wait for the boot. <laughs> Okay. Um, can you request it again? No, it still says host disabled participant screen share. Hmm. Ah, that's not that's the wrong one. That's mine. That's you doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's have a look. Hmm. Let's turn that off. Okay, all, all participants. Okay, I think that's okay, go Okay. Right, you got that? Yep. So this is the workbook. 32 and I mentioned the workbook. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. Okay, so that's number one. And it includes that loss. So there's these five things which appear in each one. Our task but so this one's got virtues, it's got efforts, and it's got bases of creativity. So that's four, four, and four. And that's, that's 12. This is number two. Which has got five, which is 17. 
and then this one's got seven, uh, which is 24. And this one's got eight, which is 32. So it is, it's all of these ones at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So it's the ones in lower case, which are the 32. So it's the virtues, the seven facets of awakening, the five powers, four bases of creativity, and the force efforts and the four foundations of mindfulness. So what you're suggesting is that one of those groups might be something that people could get involved in, interested in. How do you mean? Is that, sorry, I'm just trying, I'm paraphrasing. Do you think that oh. of those 32, is that what you're saying is that they, people might be get interested in and follow up some of no. those rather than all? Well, that even presumes that we should even be, um, you know, um, taking notice of this. this um, I mean, this is, I think, more of them. You know, this is sort of what are they called in English? There's a better word for Indonesian than that. I'm sure there's a German word in German in German for it. It's almost certainly. Uh, it's, what's it called? It, it's it's just the same old trying to to fit the the the, the square blocks of you know, the, of the Buddha's Dharma into, into sort of a modern language. And, and it's just, just for that reason alone, I, I think it fails. Just, be, just because of that, because it's, I mean, I'm not saying that you don't, you know, reach into that Dharma to, to pull things out. Um, but this seems to be trying to, trying too hard to um, uh, reconstruct um, a Buddhist Dharma for the 21st century. That's what I think he's trying to do. And, and for me, the question is, you know, is this effort even, you know, to what extent is this effort even worth it to try and do that? Especially as, you know, we look at the world so differently and categorize it so differently these days. You know, the, these particular ways of explaining the world are, are a good deal less useful than perhaps they, they they might have been two and a half thousand years ago. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know where to start with this really. I mean, maybe I just got to sort of you know um, cut him some slack and uh, <laughs> let him let him go, go for it and uh, you know just see how he ties it together. Um, and yeah. But any, any, I'll be interested to hear what you had to say. I'll, I'll go back and look at the recording and hear the recording. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I can't. It doesn't make. I mean, they're just words, aren't they? Yes, well, that's. I mean, yeah, which is not entirely you know it's okay but they're just sort of not, it's trying too hard to sort of you know retrofit an existing you know buddhist structure into a format that he that i think he can feel he can sell to uh, those of you know his, his own community and his own identity which is obviously buddhist yeah I, th I think that is that I would uh, 
Well, we were just talking about that, Rupert and me, that this is actually, when I look at it now, I realize what a kind of a, you know, they call it heuristic, isn't it? When it is a, mm -hmm. a an interpretation of the old texts, basically. Mm -hmm. And actually, mm -hmm. that is, um, that is a, a, a thing that Stephen is drawn to, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and he often quotes people like Tillich, who did, uh, you know, impressed him and did that for the Bible and stuff like, you know, you know really um, Christian texts, that kind mm -hmm. of um, taking a, 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 your modern eye to the ancient text and reinterpreting what is said there uh, in, in, and may, make it work in modern language really mm -hmm. or with with a modern worldview how would you interpret the old text nowadays and that, mm -hmm. that is pretty much stephen's life's work isn't it That's and right. then well it's also his community as well he's in yeah Jedi. yeah so you know it's, it's the, so i guess you know he doesn't have a lot of choice in, in terms of you know his uh you know well, especially if you're thinking in terms of it just as a career, um, you know, which I'm not saying that he shouldn't, um, but, but uh, it does limit him because his, his most loyal uh, followers have come from a Buddhist type of background. Mm -hmm. So he's basically talking to them in yeah. the main. Yeah. Um, but, so you're basically trying to pull them into some other, you know, at least secularized uh, um, uh, Buddha's Dharma, uh, and, and and I guess yeah, that that's the objective for him. I think that's perhaps uh, uh, as much as he might want to hope for. I don't know, um, but yeah, it does. It is of course quite limiting if you are you know genuinely wanting to to define the Dharma um, as he is you know, trying to do here. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it is just, if, if you would just look at this for the first time, you would just have no idea of what this is about, would you? You would have mm. no possibility of understanding a word of it. I wouldn't. So this is very, I mean, especially, and, and points it out because it's so sparse now, um, that if you don't, if you haven't gone with him, that whole process, uh, well, how, how these words came by, what they are the interpretation of. So if you haven't got a good solid grounding in the old text, you, you don't stand a, a chance to mm -hmm. even figure out what the hell is going on here? So it is very, it's only understandable on the grounds of knowing the old teachings, I think, mm. looking at it. Mm. So, and that is, you know, yeah, and it's, as you say, there's no reason why he should do that. It is his life's work. And these are where most of his, that's what he's known for. That's where his following is. And there, and and I would think that most of his following is very happy to leave it at that. Mm. And um, so then, um, when Rupert and I talk together, and you talk together, we kind of <laughs> jumping at the bit, and so yeah, can can it be further out? Can it have other influences? Can it be less dogmatic? Um, then um, that's that's our thing. It's not necessarily his. Hmm. Mm. Well, that, that's sort of one of I guess one of the reasons I was thinking about you know whether the um, you know, our discussions on this could could be made known to people in that group. Just on the off chance there might be a couple of others who um, you know, might be thinking along the same lines. Um, but you know, it does have have the potential to to cause uh, uh, some conflict. I don't know. Yeah. 
Because I always can... shoot my mouth off and I can't agree oh. to that. Because I name oh. names and I say, oh God, what have you done? But, but you, you, you do it in, 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 the, in the nicest possible way. No, I don't. Uh, I'm a cow. I do no. not. Well, yes. Some, <laughs> I'm provocative you, yeah. and a right old cow. That's the reality. Yeah. Well, okay, we'll, we'll all acknowledge that. That's, that's just the way it is with Elvis, okay? yes but do i want it known to the people who i've i've just well it's already already unfairly known. We'll treated. <laughs> well maybe we should do what we what you mentioned a, a while ago gary i don't know when it was last time we met but about the idea of of transcribing and bringing these because the the, the problem with those recordings are that they're they just they're very long and there's probably you know, two or three interesting discussion points maybe more in each one but it wouldn't be we wouldn't I mean it's going to take time but it would be more useful I think to bring those out rather than having to wade through the whole thing that you just I, think that, these yes. these are pertinent bits. This this is an interesting mm -hmm. point, but it needs time in order to put those into a coherent position. And particularly well, if you're not right. if you're not involved in the conversation. So I think that yes, it would be useful to certainly to look back and extract the the points. But starting where we are now, I think. Elfie's point about trying to put together people who are like-minded around a theme would be more official. So just in general terms, those people who are interested in using the Dharma in conjunction with their worldview, as opposed to starting with the Dharma and mm -hmm. integrating their worldview. I mean, those are two different ways of looking at the same thing. So you've got, this is what I think, and this is what the Dharma says. So I, this is more important to me, but I want to include some Dharma. And there's people say, well, this is more important to me, and I want to include my worldview into that. So there's two different ways of looking at the same stuff. And it, you could, but it's all the same stuff. So it would be reasonable, I think, to sort of say, well, there's two groups of people it's more sense that those people initially at least talk together because you're going to get more coherent conversations less argument there's going to be a, a, a that we are in this together and therefore it's more likely to spark off interesting ideas and perspectives so we, if we could do that as was mentioned i say if we brought this up a couple of weeks ago that we 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 could engineer a system whereby that took place within the next semester. I think that would be, then we could, well, I might have given us enough time to say, well, actually, we talked about that in this video. We, you know, you could have a look at it. I think that would be more valuable than just sort of opening it up generally to, at, at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that would be good. Yeah. And if we then recorded those wider discussions, I think that would be of more value to to people. There will be more participants, uh, perhaps. Um, yeah. And and that could be and it will be less personal. So so I think that would be great. And and from from you know, um, um, uh, Rupert has uh, uh, written, written a thing that, you know, as, as the preparation for our next group meeting, study group meeting, and it's just, again, you know, just really cool writing. So you could even share that again on the, on the website, on the Bodhi yeah, I'll College. Find it, find it for Gary, and then that could be you know, again, you know, if you are interested in these things, um, 
like uh, would you join a meeting would you would you join that, that that study group that is actually not just locally devised or however they went about it to do the study groups um but they are they pull together people with a similar interest and it is not i i see what gary says you know you don't want the split um but it wouldn't be about am i this am i that that's identity it, it would be are you interested in this you know or i don't i'm not interested in your identity i'm just interested in your interest in um Can you see that? If my no. uh, e email screen. It's called starts off with Dharma Engineering. Can you see that, Gary? Yes, I can. I'm just right. going through. Okay, well, I'll send it to you. We're not going to read it now. But yeah. that's that's what I've sent to our group for a discussion for next week. And the, okay. as I said, the idea is to, is to discuss really the point we've just been talking about. Is it valuable to have different interest groups? And if it is, how do we make those that happen? Mm. So I'm just using this, what I'm writing as, a, as an overview yeah. of that. But what oh, reminds that, that? I think question two there, you can see that there's the basis of creativity. This is the bit that this is Stevens, aspiration, energy, answer. But when I taught creativity, those were the seven stages of creativity. So my second question to everybody is, is what's going on here? I mean, what, what is the basis of creativity to do with acting creatively? And I, to be honest, I couldn't see any correlation at all um, mm. between them. Yeah. I think so that you uh, you picked uh, slightly the wrong one to compare to. It's not the basis of creative because you say acting creatively and then you take the basis of creativity. I think okay. the four strategic efforts would have been a better comparison, I have to say, because that's also about an effort an acting rather than a kind of a m mind frame or characteristics. You know, it is about, because you, you want to compare it to acting creatively, and then it would make much more sense to me. But that's taking our, our discussion next Tuesday. Yeah, well, no, yeah, you do that. Just, just say that again. I should have created it with the four strategic efforts. I, uh, yeah, because there I can see how it actually enhances what you know, I totally agree with this. Is I, I'm familiar with this line uh, because right. I studied how we learn, and right. that is a thing that that uh, really reminds me of that. I've never seen that list, but it, I, I do, uh, you know, I recognize the incubation and all that. Yeah. And what that so, what that um, uh, lines out is the end result. What I like about the strategic efforts is that they describe the acting much more or the, the kind of, because it's say that it, no, not the acting, the, the world in which something like this might happen, in which a first insight happens, preparation happens, incubation happens. The world in that that it happens is a creation already. And he figures that out, he says, creating the condition. So if that were combined with your list, then it would do it for me. So it's this, this one here, creating the conditions for reactivity not to arise. Yes, because creating the conditions is much more interesting than first insight by itself. Because how do you get there? Now, if you would, if you would tell your pupils well to get the first insight you've got to turn up here and get the task set or whatever to get the incubation if you you know to come to a, create the conditions for incubation create the conditions for preparation that you can do 
you cannot just prepare. You know, that is for me a, a big insight, and it actually comes from Martin, this creating the conditions. That's Martin's hobby horse, not Stevens, I from what I can remember. And I always really admired that. Anyway, that's that's going into the, the ah, I got sidetracked, sorry. But it you know that on that level, I think there is just I mean that would be a discussion clearly, which you know um, gets my interest. And I and that's um that is something that I would enjoy to meet people. Indeed, like we have planned, you know, and we're going to get a first outing in our little study group and see what people do with it. And um, and if that would have legs for a bigger group that could, you know, it's such a good starting point what you've done there, Rupert. I just really admire that. The way you did present it, just like the first uh, post that you did. It creates a, a fulcrum to, uh, you know, around which uh, like-minded people could gather. It's a, it's a, it's a good set. Of, you know, it's a good gathering point. You have that in your writing. Okay, I'm just so if I can find the original, I can send it on to. Uh, Okay, I've seen you that, Gary. So if you, you could, okay, you can have a look at that at some okay. stage. Right, right. Okay, uh, forty minutes ago, so I'm going to have to go. But I really am going to. Have to go okay. Um, okay. So, <laughs> uh, but it's lovely to see you. I'm glad we made it um, uh, all together. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Seeing yeah. that everyone's oh, okay. Okay, next week, oh, are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I could be anywhere next week. Probably in Jakarta, but I'm not really sure. But, but uh, yeah, I'll be somewhere. Okay, <laughs> cool. <30 seconds. laughs> okay. right, well, right. and it's a it's an hour earlier then. Yeah, yeah. remember. Yeah. Well, I'll do okay. A, I left that up to Zoom to figure out, and that did it wrong on the obvious thing. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, so I'll, I pencil uh, it in for Friday then, ten o'clock. Friday, great, good, good. Okay. I'll see you all again then. Yeah. Take care. Paint my wall by then. May you do 